In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Today at this Mass we remember Dolores Opie, and today we also celebrate in uh, this particular province, we celebrate the Ascension. So the Ascension normally on uh, Thursday of this last week, 40 days after Easter, we transfer to Sunday. So in place of the seventh Sunday of Easter, we have the readings then for the Ascension, and today we celebrate our Lord returning to heaven. Come down to earth in the Annunciation in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, now having completed the work that the Father sent him to complete, having won for us salvation and the forgiveness of sins, Jesus returns to the right hand of the Father, and for this we are filled with joy. Let us begin by calling to mind our sins as we ask our Heavenly Father for mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O God, whose Son today ascended to the heavens as the apostles looked on, grant, we pray, that in accordance with his promise, we may be worthy for him to live with us always on earth, and we with him in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book of, the, or of the, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he, whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during the 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they gathered together, they asked, Lord, are you yet at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. And while they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, Suddenly, two men dressed in white garments stood beside them, and they said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. Shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. All you peoples, clap your hands, shout to God with gri cries of gladness. For the Lord, the most high, the awesome, is the great king all over the earth. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts his, tr his throne amid joys or shouts of joy, the Lord amid trumpet blasts. Sing praise to God, sing praise. Sing praise to our king, sing praise. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. For the king of all the earth is God. Sing hymns of praise. God reigns over the nation. God sits upon his holy throne. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a prayer of trumpets for the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of our glory, give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call, what are the riches of, his, of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe, in accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at the right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all these things beneath his feet, and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is in his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak new languages. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So then the Lord, after he spoke to them, was taken up into heaven and took his seat at the right hand of God. But they went forth and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs. The Gospel of the Lord. The Ascension is a fitting thing for us to celebrate because Jesus, of course, came from heaven and now he returns to heaven. 
Um, and so in that sense, we can say it completes the mission that the Father had given to him. But really, there's more to it than that, because we think about the effect that the ascension had upon the disciples, upon the apostles. And this also is something that can, we can reflect on as well in our own lives. Um, this is different from the way in which Jesus left the disciples when he died on the cross. Um, yes, he had to leave them for a time. He went away from them, we can say, in his death, and then returned to them on Easter Sunday. In this case, we can say that his spirit went forth. His body remained on earth, but his spirit went forth to ransom the souls in the, in the netherworld, bringing them into the promised kingdom of heaven. Um, and so that was actually a wonderful thing that happened, but the disciples, of course, were left in tremendous despair. To say that they were left thinking that Jesus had lost everything, having died on the cross. This time, after the resurrection, when they see Jesus go away from them, this is an entirely different experience, because this is not Jesus dying in pain, delivering over only his spirit, sending forth his spirit, but this time this is Jesus' body and soul ascending, uh, on the clouds back to the right hand of the Father in heaven. So there's really no doubt that Jesus, not only has he not lost, in fact, he has won. He has won the victory entirely. So this is really something that is entirely wonderful. Even if they do have to let go of Jesus to let him go back to the Father, still this, in fact, is a wonderful thing. Sometimes it might remind us of that kind of bittersweet moment when children get old enough to go out into the world on their own and they leave home. Um, so is that a good thing? Parents might say when their children go forth, they say, well, yes, it's a good thing. It might be a little sad saying goodbye, and not goodbye forever, of course, but that they send them out. Except in this case, it's not really the students who leave or the children who leave. It's the teacher. It's the master who's left. Who's doing the leaving in this case? It's Jesus who, in fact, is leaving and going to his true home where he came from. So to make the analogy right, we have to say that the, when children get old enough, then their parents leave them and abandon them, and the parents go to their true home and then leave the children, now grown adults, to, to, uh, to now strike out into the world on their own. So maybe not quite exactly the same, uh, the same precise example. In the same way we might talk about graduation season. This is a, very, a popular time for graduations. Sending students out into the world now as they complete their studies. Well, to make the analogy correct, we'd have to say it's the teacher is the one who's actually going away from the students. But nonetheless, the students, we can say, have learned everything that they need to learn, and it's now time for them to put into practice what they have learned. Would the disciples have set forth and gone out to preach the gospel if Jesus was still around? No, they would remain close to him. As long as Jesus was around, they would remain near him. But once Jesus ascends back into heaven, now the disciples are ready to go forth. Now they're no longer held down to any one location. They can go forward and preach, and that's what we hear them do. In the Acts of the Apostles, in the first reading, we hear of that, that they're ready to go forth. In fact, in the beautiful way in which that's expressed in the Gospel, um, hearing Mark's Gospel today, that Jesus went up into heaven, but then the disciples went forth and preached everywhere, and that the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs. See, Jesus didn't really leave them. He was with them, but we might say in a different way, in a new way, and certainly in a spiritual way. The Lord was still at work with the disciples, so we might say he left only to be closer to the disciples than, they, than he had ever been before. So he certainly continued to work with them. Now they can say, there is nothing more that Jesus has to teach us. He's taught us everything, and so he returns to heaven, and so the disciples are ready now to go forth. So it is a graduation, we might say, of sorts. But I think that there's more to this. There's, and this is where the, the second reading today, St. Paul gives us, I think, some special insight, because I think this particular feast day, in a special way, models for us the virtue of hope. So what is hope? We talk about faith, hope, and charity as the three theological virtues. So we believe that Jesus is God. That takes faith. But then hope is believing in everything that Jesus has promised and the desire to be with him forever in heaven. And that's, I think, where the ascension comes in. Jesus goes up into heaven, but he promises to prepare a place for us. And so hope is the thing that keeps us moving forward because we trust everything that Jesus said, the promise that he gave to us that we are called to be with him for all eternity, and we desire that. We long, in fact, to be united to Jesus once again in heaven. 
The virtue of hope leads us in that direction. And so what does hope then do? Hope inspires us then to work in this world, but with that confidence of the promise of the things that are to come. In other words, everything that we do in this world now becomes colored by the belief that we have in the promise of eternal life. Hope is something that gives meaning to all of our actions, and so that when we work to build up the kingdom of God, we do so for a purpose, because Jesus had entrusted that mission to the disciples and then uh, by extension also to us. And so we, in fact, want to do and continue that work so not only we, but that many others who come after us might also come to know this great faith and be filled with this same hope so that they too might join our Lord Jesus in heaven. And it moves us then to charity. It moves us to that third theological virtue by putting into practice that commandment to love one another, which is why we do what we do, why we proclaim what we proclaim, why we believe what we believe. So when St. Paul, in fact, is saying in that second reading, he says, this is so that you might know the hope that belongs to your call. It is a beautiful hope that we have and the riches of the glory in his inheritance. We, in fact, do have riches because of what Jesus has done. And in ascending to the Father, he promises us the riches of eternal life. And that is our inheritance and the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe. The Lord is not ceasing to work on earth. He's more at work on earth than ever before, working through the apostles and again, by extension, also through us. See, that wonderful virtue of hope is something that really lifts us up and sustains us in a remarkable way. And the ascension, we might say, is the, is the foretaste of what we are destined to do, to do as well, which is to be united with Jesus in heaven, body, and soul. The head of the body has gone ahead of us, and we as the members of Christ's body are called to follow. And so we look forward to that great day. Um, we say this in a couple different ways in this Mass today. So one of the things that we'll say during the Eucharistic prayer is that we are reminded that Jesus has, lift, has lifted up our weak human nature. In fact, isn't that remarkable that we know how weak we can be? But Jesus has united himself to our human nature, and in the ascension, he lifts up our humanity and places it at the right hand of the glory of God the Father. So our humanity has been very greatly elevated by, the, by what Jesus has done. And that, in fact, inspires even more hope. And what do we say after the Our Father? Do we say, deliver us from every evil, that we might be spared from every sin, freed from all anxiety? And why? Um, so that, in fact, we might uh, then uh, await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, hope. We await that blessed hope, that uh, joy-filled hope of the expectation of the coming of Christ our Savior. So why do you look up into the heavens? This Christ who has gone ahead of you will surely return as he, as he did before. Now here's the thing. I can say all of these things and talk about the virtue of hope and why we should be filled with joy on this day. But don't we also recognize how easy it is to give in to the opposite, how easy it is, in fact, to fall into despair. And this is, I think, a reality that we always have to fight against. It's easy for us to look at the things that go wrong and to become frustrated. And when we become frustrated, then we give up this great hope that has been promised to us. How easy it is, because of the weakness of our human nature, to fall away from this great promise of hope that is held out to us in this mystery today. Um, I could go back uh, last year and think about, I'm trying to think of just good examples of this. And a year ago, I started the process of losing weight, and I lost a total of 65 pounds. I have put on a little since then. But uh, I did that in the midst of the pandemic. When, when restaurants were closed down, that was helpful, because that meant I had more control over what I was cooking and what I was eating and what I was putting into the things that I was eating. And so that actually, in some ways, made it easier. And so I built up momentum, and I lost weight, and that was all good. But then the thing is, then comes then settling into a regular routine once I wasn't trying to lose weight so much anymore. And the hard thing then is that, well, then things can sort of work back and work against you. And it's easy for that to happen. I said, oh, I want to contain that. And what, was, what I found that was challenging is that it was harder the second time around, or it was harder after adapting to that, to kind of hold and maintain where I was before. Now, what could happen? it would be so easy to get frustrated. It would be so easy to say, well, why doesn't this work the way it did before? I lost weight before, why can't I do it now? 
or why is it harder now the second time? But the thing is, if we persevere in the virtue of hope, if we hold on to hope, then let us not let discouragement get in the way. He says, no, it's, it's, we shouldn't let setbacks stand in the way, but how easy it is for that to happen. Well, I persevered, so just as to keep on that track. So I'm a little above where I was before, but nonetheless uh, still holding on to the plan, holding on to you know, responsible eating so as to maintain a, a, good, a good and healthy weight. I could pick other examples as well. Think about some of the things that you might want to do or have, have desired to do or maybe things that I would look to do here in the parish. How difficult this last year has been. How, how hard it's been to, to be able to operate a school effectively, to be able to celebrate Mass, to gather together, to try to do things as a parish and for a parish. I mean, and it's so easy, I suppose, if we wanted to, any one of us could look at all of the challenges that we face and easily give in to discouragement. We could all do that. It would be so easy to do, so tempting to do, to give in to despair. Today reminds us of the need for us to persevere in hope. And why is that? Because we don't have anything to be afraid of. He says, what power does a virus have when you think about our Lord Jesus Christ? He rose from the dead. You think a little virus is going to stand in the way of him? If we hold fast to that, let us remember then ultimately that our hope lies not in anything that we have here on earth, or anything that we could accomplish for the sake of health here on earth, but in the promise of eternal life in heaven, where there's no sickness and no illness and nothing that can hold us back. Hold on to that in hope because of what we believe. We can look at political realities, tensions among nations. We can look at all kinds of things that can cause us great concern. What, does that make, what difference does that matter to Jesus Christ? He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and he's already secured the victory. Yes, we see difficulties around us, but let us not be overcome by them. We might look at economic forces, not only on a larger scale, we might be concerned about devaluation of money, about inflation, or even on our own individual circumstances about our employment, about the security that we have in, in our income. And all of these can fill us with tremendous anxiety. And yet, what difference does that make to Jesus? Jesus tells us not to be concerned about such things. Because God who clothes the flowers of the field and provides for the birds of heaven, he will provide for you as well. Be not afraid. So be not concerned about the, the worries of tomorrow. Each day has concerns enough for its own, Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount. Um, Jesus reminds us then not to be too attached to the things of this world, for they are passing away. And we persevere in hope for the promise of eternity. We might think about the forces within the world, and we'd say how difficult it is to win the culture. We might even say it seems as though we're losing the cultural battle in our world today. Um, look at all of the ways in which some things that we believe as Christians or some things that are preached within the gospel seem to run contrary to what the world teaches, what the world demands. Um, the, the values that are taught to us according to our Christian moral ethics. We might say, well, this is a concern. Look at, look at the direction the world has gone down and look at how far, gone, how far down that path we have gone. And yet, what do we say about our Lord Jesus Christ? Jesus says, I've overcome the world. And we don't need to worry about that. We don't need to be fearful of that. Why? Because we know how to solve that problem? No. Not because we have the power to do that, but because Jesus does. And he already has done it. And Jesus will, will do that as he comes again. Persevere in hope. Be not afraid. Let us, in fact, not give in to the temptations that are present around us, but in fact recognize that Jesus has done all things, and that he will do all things, and that in him all things are possible. So let us, in fact, persevere in faith, in hope, and in love, holding fast to the promise of eternal life that is given to us by our Lord Jesus Christ, who is at the right hand of the Father in heaven, and who calls us to join him for a life of eternal bliss, united always to him. And let us stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
born of the Father, before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And let us present our prayers and petitions. That the church on earth will ever keep its demands of will That the church on earth will ever keep to its evangelical mission of making disciples of the nations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of the world may realize that they must give an account of their work to Jesus Christ when he, when he returns and our dust. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That no one will be so attached to this earth as to regret being called to eternal life in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may all come to the maturity of faith in the fullness of the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our dead may ascend to glory with Christ, our Christ, our priest and king, especially my friend, brother of half our father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the protection of our religious liberties, our freedom of conscience, and the freedoms of the Church, as we say. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, who roam throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Almighty and merciful God, hear and answer these prayers that we make in faith, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, whose only begotten Son, our High Priest, is seated, ever is seated ever living at your right hand to intercede for us, grant that we may approach with confidence the throne of grace and there obtain your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, the conqueror of sin and death, ascended today to the highest heavens, as the angels gazed in wonder. Mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, their foremost merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, and Louis, his assistant Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living in truth. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our, your only begotten Son, our Lord, placed at the right hand of your glory our weak human nature, which he had united to himself, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join me in the communion antiphon. Christ, offering a single sacrifice for sins, is seated forever at God's right hand. Alleluia. 
Just a reminder about communion. Please help us to distribute communion in a way that both reverently protects the Blessed Sacrament and also safeguards, safeguards you from the spread of illness. Therefore, we ask you to receive in the hand. Uh, open your hand in a way to let the minister place the host in your hand without making physical contact. Uh, please have your hands free to receive the host reverently. Please do not drop or break the host as you receive it. You can receive more easily, I think oftentimes by lowering your mask as you approach for communion, and communion will be brought to those in the narthex.
Let us pray. May the gifts we have received from your altar, Lord, kindle in our hearts a longing for the heavenly homeland and cause us to press forward, following in the Savior's footsteps, to the place where, he, where for our sake he entered before us, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So I hope that was helpful today. I want to inspire us with hope. I think sometimes we, we need a lot of hope, especially right now. I think this is a good thing. Um, a few announcements. We do have our parish holy hour this Thursday of this week, so we encourage you to come from 7 to 8 p.m., the monthly holy hour that we have, which we have here in the, in the church. Um, so a wonderful time to spend with the Blessed Sacrament, especially as we prepare for Pentecost. And then in particular, Tuesday of this week, we look forward to the Monsignor Watson Memorial Mass. Um, so it'll be about two weeks since the actual funeral uh, for Monsignor Watson, but it is still, I think, good, even though that took place in Odell, but it's good for us here at St. Thomas to have our time to pray for him and to remember him and also to celebrate everything that he's done for us. So please join us, 5.30 p.m. for that Mass. There will be a reception afterwards. Might be a little Irish theme to that, which uh, might be particularly nice and particular tasty, particularly tasty, so we'll see. Uh, if you like, if you'd like to celebrate Irish heritage, you may wear green. I think that would be nice. If you'd like to celebrate St. Thomas School, you may wear school colors. That will probably clash with the green, but that's okay. So we encourage our, our students to, uh, to uh, wear the school colors. Um, since uh, St. Thomas School is something that's benefited so much from Monsignor Watson's work and effort. Uh, or just wear what you like, but do come and celebrate with us uh, as we uh, celebrate our second pastor, as we honor him and for everything that he's done for our parish. Um, please remember, uh, the, we depend on your contributions and your generosity to continue that work going forward. So we ask you to leave your offerings in the purple baskets that you see in the church as you leave. Uh, we appreciate those very much. They support not only the parish, but also the school and that legacy that Monsignor Watson perpetuated and that continues uh, even to this day. The Lord be with you. And bow down for a blessing. May Almighty God bless you, for on this very day, his only begotten Son pierced the heights of heaven and unlocked for you the way to ascend to where he is. Amen. May he grant that as Christ, after his resurrection, was seen plainly by his disciples, so when he comes as judge, he may show himself merciful to you for all eternity. Amen. And may you, who believed he is seated with the Father in his majesty, know with joy the fulfillment of his promise, to stay with you until the end of time. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.